Hey everyone. So last time we figured out how to install Python and get it running in VS Code in a very basic way. And today what I want to do is show you a little bit of the ways that you can end up specializing VS Code um, to fit your personal preferences, as well as to show you the ways that VS Code is designed to integrate with the Jupyter environment. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Jupyter environment, um, I've included a link below, which should tell you a little bit more about kind of what Jupyter is writ large. But broadly speaking, Jupyter um, is a set of tools that allow you to do two things when you are programming. The first is it allows you to work with what are called Jupyter Notebooks, which is a document in which you can mix regular text written in Markdown so you can talk about what you're doing with your code and the executed output of that code. So Jupyter Notebooks are a really nice tool for instruction and communication because you get to talk about what you're doing, write the code that actually does it, and see the real output. Um, and so they're also used a lot for communication in places like Netflix, which is said to run basically on passing around Jupyter Notebooks. In addition, you can also use the Jupyter ecosystem and IPython in particular um, as an alternate console for running Python. So instead of just running Python in the pure text window um, that you're used to with those three little arrow signs on it, we can also use Python in an IPython console brought to you by Jupyter. I know there's layers, it's confusing. Um, to have a much more enriched Python experience. So I wanna show you how to set that up um, and how that's gonna work for us. All right. so. Just as we did last time, I've opened up VS Code with a um, regular vanilla Python file over here on the left, and then some of this console information over on the right, so we can run our Python code interactively in the console on the right. And as you may recall, the way we're going to do that is we can select some code and then type shift enter. And you will see what Python will do is open up a Python session and run that code over there on the right hand side. Now, one thing that I will note right off the bat that I find kind of annoying about the way that VS Code is laid out right now, it has this minimap um, visualization. A lot of people are into these. I will confess I don't love it. So just as a first example of the type of stuff that you can do to modify the way that things um, work in your environment is I'm going to turn off this minimap. And so now I have a little bit more space for my code, just an example of some of the types of personalizations we can use. So. Running Python in this way against a regular Python console session works reasonably well. And as we've discussed before, you can kind of see what you're doing as you write your code. By the way, you'll notice I set up a little thing to show you my keyboard strokes as I type. Um, and so hopefully that'll make sure you understand when I hit things on the keyboard what's happening. But there are some downsides to this basic editor. So for example, if I run this line of code that generates a plot, it just tells me that it made a plot. Right, And if I write code that saves that to a file, I could go open that file. But it's a little frustrating that the vanilla Python interface doesn't show you any information directly as you're working through that. Similarly, if I ask for help, it'll give me the help documents for the file, but the formatting is a little, eh, it's fine, but nothing particularly impressive. By contrast, when we run this Python through um, Jupyter, it ends up looking a little bit differently. And so what I'm going to do is going to right click on this code again. And instead of going all the way down to run selection and line in a Python terminal, I'm going to choose run selection line in an interactive window. This interactive window is the name that VS Code uses to refer to a Jupyter instance. And so it's going to open up. Oh, it's going to ask me to install some stuff because this is a clean session. Very nicely, it knows what it needs to tell me to install. So we can go ahead and ask it to install this IPython kernel. Do, do, do. Okay, we're back. So basically, um, VS Code was smart enough to recognize that I didn't have IPython installed, so it went and installed it with Conda, um, and then it pops up. This is a little ugly right now, and I actually don't need any of this terminal information anymore, so I'm going to close that. And now I just have these two windows that are now open. And so what's happening is everything I'm selected got run in this block. You can choose to unfold it if you want to see what was run or what was not. But now if I select the plot and I choose run selection line in interactive window, No, I don't need a new window. 
what we see is we now get to see the plot right in line, right? So immediately we're getting to see the feedback um, in all of the graphical representations. The other thing is that in Jupyter, we can ask for help documentation by putting a question mark after a file and then running it with shift enter. And here we see we get a little bit more formatting style. It's a little bit cleaner. Nothing that's gonna change your life, but you know, just in general, when you're working in the Jupyter space, you get a little bit of augmentation in terms of how things are gonna be presented to you. There's also a number of functions that come in the IPython um, environment that are referred to as IPython magics. Um, these are tricks that start with a um, dollar sign. So for example, if I do time it, um, and I run that code, oops, this uh, percent sign time it says whatever code comes next, I want you to figure out how much time it takes for that code to run. And then it will basically bring a utility to bear to run it a number of different times and tell you about the distribution of run times. Um, and there's a whole handful of these kind of IPython magics that people find really convenient and those are available in this window. Oh, right, the other augmentation that I wanted to show you, um, which is very nice about the IPython um, interaction is if we come up here to this little box, this shows us all the variables that currently exist within this open session. And if you're working with data frames, what's very nice is VS Code comes with a data viewer, which means that you can easily just scroll through the data that's in your um, uh, data frame, which is really nice for just getting a comfortable feeling of your data. It also allows you to do things like filter. So if I just wanted to see the entries for whom continent is Europe in the data set, you can do kind of filterings as you go. And there's a number of these other tricks, right? So this is one of those augmentations that you get with a Jupyter interface that is not really available um, with the vanilla interface that you get. Um, from Jupyter on its own. Okay, so the one thing that's kind of annoying about this particular situation is that in order to run code, I have to right click and come down here to run selection or line in an interactive window. And what I want to do is set it up so anytime I hit shift enter, we're gonna end up executing an interactive session instead of running in that vanilla Python terminal, right? Because right now, if I select some of this code and type shift enter, it's gonna go back and open up this um, Python terminal that we had before, not run it in the interactive session by default. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how you modify keyboard shortcuts in VS Code. And I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more about how settings and personalizations work in VS Code in a different video, but this should give you something of a flavor for how it works. So if I come down here to the X, there's a keyboard shortcuts option, which I'm gonna select. I'm gonna close this interactive window so I have a little bit more space. And we're gonna search for run selection. And we can see we actually have two keyboard shortcuts, both of which have the same key binding. So run selection line in the Python terminal has the shortcut shift enter. And Jupyter also has run selection in the interactive window as shift enter. The difference actually comes down to these win statements that are over here. So keyboard shortcuts can be specific to a context, meaning that when you enter a keyboard shortcut, VS Code first looks at something like, what is the suffix on the file that you are using? And so here, because it's .py, the first thing that it's gonna assume is that it wants to um, use, run this script from a regular thing because it thinks that this is a regular Python file and not a Jupyter file. And so what we're gonna do is modify these slightly. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the win expression. And we're going to remove the section that requires that Jupyter owns the selection. So this is basically a condition that says, this keyboard shortcut only works if I'm in a .ip and .ipynb file. And instead, now this keyboard shortcut is going to be enabled for any Python file. Now, this creates a small problem because now we have two
commands that have the same keyboard shortcut that are meant to run uh, to do different things. And so right now, if I'm in a Python file, I don't know what shift enter is gonna do. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna change it to control shift enter. So it's a different keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna hit enter. Oops, yep, there we go. And so now I've defined shift enter to be the keyboard shortcut that runs things in an interactive window and control shift enter will run things in a Python window. So we're gonna come back here and just to demonstrate, I'll select a block, I'll hit shift enter, oops. And clearly I botched that. I did not save my change. So I'm gonna delete that entry. There we go, okay. Make sure that that stayed place, great. So now I have deleted the condition that Jupyter has to own the selection, um, which means that this keyboard shortcut will be valid even in situations when we're not in a Jupyter notebook, when the file doesn't end with .ipynb. And we've changed the Python terminal um, command to, um, uh, a different command so that they're not conflicting anymore. One of the things that's actually kind of nice about Python, it, or not Python, about um, VS Code is if you create multiple commands that have the same keyboard shortcut, it'll warn you about that conflict. So now I can come back here, I select the text I wanna run, I type shift enter, and it opens an interactive console this time to run my code in, instead of running it in a um, regular Python environment. And if I wanted to, I can still run things in a regular Python environment with control shift enter with a regular Python terminal. But as I said, I almost always work in a Jupyter notebook, so that's better. Now, if you know about Jupyter notebooks, you know that one of the things that they're very big on is having a structure that allows you to create files that have um, what are called cells that can be of different types. So you can have a cell that's regular text and a cell that is code that can be run, a cell that is text, etc. And one of the things that VS Code realized is data scientists live and die by Jupyter Notebooks. And so they came up with their own implementation of Jupyter Notebooks. So here's an example of a .ipynb file that I can open up exactly as a Jupyter Notebook. And as you can see, it has a lot of the same kind of feel and look that you would expect if you were opening a Jupyter notebook in Jupyter, right? So we have these cells and most of the keyboard shortcuts that you're used to are also gonna work here. So it has the same shift enter to run a cell and move down. It has the same alt enter to run a cell, but then also create a new empty cell below it. So I can write print hello. Um, you can move up and down to select different cells. You can add a new cell below with a B. You can change the type of the cell with the same keyboard shortcuts that you're used to. So this is now marked down, whoops, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are a person who is desperately in love with Jupyter Notebooks and doesn't want to have to move across environments, here is a fully, kind of realized implementation of Jupyter Notebooks that lives within VS Code. It's not perfect. I've noticed a couple shortcuts, um, like splitting cells doesn't seem to work when you're working in VS Code. Um, and there are a few integrations that I found missing. So for example, in regular Jupyter Notebooks, there's a tool that will um, format your code every time you run a cell so that it meets style guidelines and that doesn't seem to work in this environment. But you know, most basic things that you want from a Jupyter Notebook, you can do here in VS Code, which is very nice. Now, the one feature that um, Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code have that a lot of people are very fond of is that if you click this button to export, one of the options is to export to a Python script. Now, uh, if you're on a system with a number of different users with Python installations, you can run into a little trouble with this. Um, there's a small bug that should be patched within a couple weeks, but for most people that should run fine. 
But what it does is it creates this new .py file that will do all the things that your notebook did, but is now just a regular plain text file. Now, this is a big deal because Jupyter Notebooks are very nice for kind of instructional materials and sharing stuff directly, but they cause massive headaches when you try to upload a um, Jupyter Notebook file onto GitHub. And that's because even when there's a very small change in a Jupyter Notebook, at the level of the plain text representation, it will cause a huge number of changes. And so the git diff, the um, way that GitHub tries to show you changes from one commit to another, instead of just showing the small bit of stuff that you think you actually changed, it'll end up showing lots of different changes that have happened in the notebook, like changes to metadata and formatting and images will have updated and an updated image has new stuff. It's all sorts of a mess. And so when you start collaborating on GitHub, Jupyter Notebooks don't work particularly well. And it's for that reason that a lot of people like this utility that will take a notebook and export it as a .py file. So let's save this as notebook exported.py. And what you'll see is that this looks a little bit different from the regular py file that we had before because it now has these fun little things that say run cell or run above. And what's happened is Jupyter, sorry, VS Code has this ability that whenever it sees a document that has this pound space percent percent in it, that is a Python file, it will think of it as having come from a Jupyter notebook. And so even though this file is now plain text, if I run command shift, say right above this important numpy is NP. Oh, yeah. Right, so it's gonna try to run these blocks the way that it would run blocks in an old um, notebook style, right? And so this is kind of a, an intermediate stage between a plain text representation and a Jupyter notebook that some people like. Um, if you were wondering before what the situations were where the Jupyter.own selection condition was met under that keyboard shortcut, it was any document where you saw this pound sign space percent percent. And so shift enter when you're here in this environment will always run in one of these interactive windows. That was its original setting. Um, when we modify that, we just extended it. So even if it doesn't have this pound percent percent, we can still by default when we hit command enter run our code in an interactive session. So this is a thing you can use if you're into it. Some people really like them. I find them kind of messy and a weird intermediate, but um, I would not be doing my due diligence in introducing you to Jupyter if I didn't tell you about this functionality. So there it is. So um, hopefully this has shown you how we can use VS Code, not just to run Python in a regular text-based Python console, but also against an IPython Jupyter console that has all the augmentations and added benefits that we like from IPython, like IPython magics, better highlighting, the ability to um, show images in line as you print them as you're working along. It has this great little tool for inspecting variables in the open session, including most importantly data frames, which is where as a data scientist you'll find a lot of your tabular data. Uh, and then if at some point you have to move back to a world where you're working with .py files, you can relatively easily export what you had in a Jupyter notebook to a .py file, um, which kind of helps make that transition a little bit smoother. I will also say one thing that is often very nice is to make the transition and then just delete do find replace and delete all of these little block comments. And now you basically extracted all the code you had in a notebook and put it in a regular .py file in a way that doesn't look quite as crowded and messy. So anyway, that's it for the Jupyter integration. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Thanks.